Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Artisans of Splendid Veil by Renegade Game Studios. This is a two to four player game that takes roughly about an hour and a half per episode that you like to partake in, and it's for ages 14 and up. Artisans of Splendid Veil is basically a story-driven dungeon crawling game where you're playing as one of four different diverse characters attempting to complete your story. Now, there is an overarching story, there's some sub-stories for each of the characters, and there's a variety of combat and reading in the game. And a rich world to explore through the process. We're going to go ahead and take a look at basically how the basic setup is, how to play the game, all kind of lightly, and then we'll go ahead and talk about our review for the game Artisans of Splendid Gale. <laughs> veil. Veil. Every player will choose their unique character to play. Uh, you'll get your box, your book, as well as a little meeple, and uh, you'll, you'll start your setup there with some specific cards and items as well. Uh, there's an index card deck that you'll be using to do that, so that'll be set to the side. As well, you'll have an action booklet you'll set in front of the table so everyone everyone can see when you get to that point. You have a bunch of different meeples you'll put to the side, which could be allies or uh, adversaries that you'll be meeting. Or as familiars. Well as, or familiars and dice to the side. You'll assign someone to be the reader who will start narrating the book at the beginning, as well as someone to be your scribe, to keep hold of the adventure booklet and track all of your adventures as you go through the process. Yeah, it's gonna come with this big map here mm -hmm. that's going to basically show you the entire world that you're gonna be dealing with. As well as your log of what, what happens as you go through the story. The rest of it's just tokens and some life trackers that we'll be keeping use of, as well as giving everybody a single pencil. After that, just read the storybook and it will tell you exactly how to play the game, which will give you an idea of now. So Artisans of Splendid Veil is a fairly simple game for play. Basically, you're going to be reading in a booklet together. Now, each of you have your own separate booklets, but they're basically the same with unique areas where you'll interject depending on who you are, what you can do, etc., etc. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to pit you in combat, basically. You'll be taking the booklet, you'll be flipping it over to a location, adding monsters to a board, placing your characters on the board, and then it's kind of an action management game with a uh, initiative tracker on the top left-hand side of the game board. You'll be left to right based on the characters that are there doing combat whether it's rolling dice for the monsters to determine what they do or rolling dice for you it's got a draft dice to dice pool where you're going to be having a certain number of dice in a pool you'll draw three of your own you'll, you'll go ahead and uh, roll those selecting dice from the pool based on yep. how many actions do you have mm -hmm. how many do you got you get two, two actions, actions right on your turn and the dice pool is community, so everyone is sharing those dice. So you can uh, collaborate with each other to decide what actions are best for the overall group to take as well. The dice you have can... unique yeah. um, different sides to them. It could be for movement, it could be movement and a bonus, it could be a wild, it could be an attack, et cetera, et cetera, shield. And they're all based on different abilities that you'll get on your character. Yeah, so you'll have your character sheet will have all of your abilities, which could change over time. Yep. As well as there's different dice that you can use to augment uh, your abilities as well. You'll track the HP of your enemies with these little tokens here, mm -hmm. these counters here. Lighters, and the yep. only thing that's really complicated, or a little, not complicated, but a little different in this game compared to most dungeon crawlers, it's that each of your enemy types, so if you have a bandit, all bandits share the same health pool, so to speak. So when you do six damage to any of the bandits and a bandit has six health, you can defeat the bandit that you lasted that damage to. So you can kind of select and choose where your damage is gonna go, which is a cool, unique instance in this game. And it makes it then easier to track, um, not have to try to keep, oh, which bandit was bandit number one, which one was number two, so you don't have to keep track of all that. It simplifies the combat a lot, which is great. Yep, initiative, action-based combat, mm -hmm. moving, fighting, doing ability, Abilities, drafting dice and using those dice as part of your abilities. When combat is over, hopefully you've won, mm -hmm. you'll move on to the story portion of the game where you're going to be taking out your booklet and reading together in a choose your own adventure style format. The main story reader will read the basic narrative and then players will interject. You'll be going into different instances like locations where you're going to be able to select different numbers in those locations. Yeah, so in the booklet itself there will be visuals, maps, where your map may not look the same as my map, and there could be a discussion of, of where to explore and how to explore. Well, at not that necessarily point. different. It's the yeah, same map, it's the but same what's map. unique about it is. There's unique things you notice that no one else notices. 
yes. ma- in that way. <laughs> there are different numbers located mm-hmm. on the map mm-hmm. that will allow you to choose those, and you'll be turning pages. And basically, when you move up from one location to another, if you're not careful, you might miss something, but you'll gain valuable materials and whatnot for the crafting system that happens later in the game. Basically, when you finish the booklet, you're going to come to the end of a day. At the end of a day, you're going to be able to choose or select a different location that you'd like to go to in the Artisans of Splendid Vale. Maybe you want to go home and take a nap. Maybe you'd like to go ahead and track down those bandits. Or go back to the library and see if you missed something. You'll have those options, and then you're going to proceed from there up until more combat. Or if you choose to end the day, you can go ahead and use the material that you've gained or resources to increase and your valuable commodities. Definitely spend your experience because each character has a unique skill tree that they'll be able to upgrade their skills with. And they each function differently. For instance, mm-hmm. mine might be I gain three experience, which I can use on my grid to give me new abilities. But I also might need materials. Or it might be in constitution with the materials that will allow me to gain new unique abilities. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I might not be able to gain that ability unless I find the specific needed uh, information from the booklet itself. Mm-hmm. Oh, I have the ability to gain double strike? Well, I can't actually get that because I haven't found the ability yet to fi- unlock it in the booklet. So there's a lot of unique little twists and turns with the Choose Your Own Adventure mm-hmm. as for what you can unlock throughout the story, and of course, more combat. And it kind of rinses and repeats from there. You're going to go on to new combats, go on to the booklet to start reading the story once again. It's a mix between a Choose Your Adventure and an action management initiative style dungeon crawlers type of a game. Mm-hmm. Anything else to include? Um, no, I think that's all the different components. Okay, <laughs> let's go ahead and review it. Okay, so Artisans of Splendid Vale, what do we think about it? Well, let's first go into some details about what we liked about the game. I love that each of the characters has a unique box with artwork. It has the different story of the characters that you're going to be uh, placing all the things you've gained throughout the game here. You're also going to have a unique deck, where as the days end, they'll merge with unique new storylines. Your character is going to come inside this box as well. Oh, and, and of course, you get an eraser, so that way you have extra eraser when you erase. Uh, all the beautiful miniatures are wonderful, and the colors are super, super vibrant. Yes. Definitely one thing that drew me to this game was the art, especially the landscape art of the veil. And then uh, as you're reading the book, too, I kind of like that as a designated rule book reader many times, (laughs) there wasn't actually a lot of rules to read because it is really something that you're doing as a group together. Um, Reading through the book, you can kind of base it on on your group, who wants to be the narrator, or you can trade off narrators. There's a lot of flexibility, which is really nice. I will say that I I really enjoy playing this with the full four players. I think that's where the game's really going to shine, is when you have someone for each character, because there are some things where you might have to kind of not skip, but it'll be an alternative uh, pathway. You lose out on pathways. I feel like, yeah, a little bit if you don't have all four characters. Yeah, I wouldn't play this at two players, for sure. This mm-hmm. is definitely a four-player game. This is that that gives you the ability to kind of unlock anything that you would like to unlock in the game. And you don't have to skip players. And to see all of the unique uh, character classes and their how they function is really because they're all really unique in their ways. They're crafting as well as how they gain exp- experience. So the booklet itself, the Choose Your Adventure portion of the game, is my favorite, for sure. I like going through the booklet, I like reading the different portions, I like following along with other other players and having their own unique little storylines attached to each of the locations that you visit. There's artwork inside of the book that details the different locations. It's wonderful. It works great. The story kind of intertwines with itself and works with the other players. Solid, solid experience. The combat. I love the artwork of the combat. And the game is basic enough to where you'll understand it. If you've done any dungeon crawlers before or any action management, like fighter type simulation games, then this is going to be one that's not too super complicated. It's very intuitive and builds on other games that are similar. However, for me personally, it would get repetitive. After playing a few of these combats, I start to understand, okay, they're pretty much all the same. There is some uniqueness to it. And yes, what leads to a unique new story attached to it is cool. And I like the fact that there's all these different tokens and minage these little mm-hmm. little meeples I should say really really solid this is also super awesome and everything here is customized and made for each of the players they did a really good job of making sure this game is super high quality including just the combat dice and additionally of course the dice pool I love that aspect about combat where you're selecting dice and that allows you to have certain abilities but if you roll poorly you might not get to do what you want to do and you might have to spend actions doing something you won't wouldn't want to do actually just on the point of each character feeling so unique and personalized, like even your pencils are unique to your character, which is fun. You really feel like, okay, I'm this character. 
and everything is written in the first person then that you get to kind of interject and speak out loud. This is kind of a once playthrough type of a yes. game where once you've written on your board, you can erase certain things, but there's certain aspects like stickers that once are mm -hmm. placed on, unless they have some type of remodeled kit or like a kit that you can redo things like Gloomhaven or Frosthaven yeah. do, this is a simple once through. Now it's a long game, there's a lot to it. Because you'd have to print out this all differently, some of the stickers, yeah, it would be a lot to do a, a replay kind of version of this. Yeah, and of course with your weapons that you gain, through the index, which is also a really cool little aspect to the game where you're kind of like, this kind of reminds me of um, uh, Jamie Stegmeyer game, Stegmeyer game, the- Yes, Charter Stones. Charter Stones, where yes, you have an index yes. of cards and it'll be like, pull out number 27 mm -hmm. and then add that to your tableau. And now you have that uh, unique, specific, I don't know, bat familiar or whatever it might be that you're yeah. gonna gain throughout <laughs> the game. Um, I guess the other thing too is I love the art as far as all the vividness. I love all mm -hmm. of the different locations in the game. Yeah. All of the, these are great. I, the only thing I didn't much care for was the, the character art. I thought that this like was kind of misplaced. It didn't match everything else. It was just like less detailed, it's less Character art intricate. versus the landscape yes. art. Yes, like everything else minus the character art. There's some characters I did like better than others, but for some reason these just didn't fit really well mm -hmm. with me. I, I wasn't a super big fan of them. Um, but other, yeah. other than those two main things, this kind of combat can get a little bit repetitive and some of the character I wasn't a huge fan of. This is a really solid little dungeon crawler choose yeah. your own adventure game. And I really I like how you can, um, how it introduces you to the game and you kind of learn as you go and it builds on your knowledge so that it's not an overload of information all at once. You're kind of exploring and learning new things as you go, which is really, really good. It also tells you too in each of the different uh, scenarios how long they are. Yeah. So 80 to 120 minutes, and that's Ruin Raiders. And then when you move on to the next one for mm -hmm. Campsite Ambush, it's 40 to 60. So you can kind of time your group setting for when you have the time to do the next scenario. It's one of those things where you can easily set aside. You get your stuff, you put it back into your box, and yeah. then you're ready once again for next time. You don't actually you have a bunch of other stuff to do. Yep, you could play two of the scenarios and, and you can kind of decide when exactly to stop, but it's ideal to stop probably at the end of the, the day. <laughs> yep, um, they includes a lot of diversity in the game. There are mm -hmm. characters with each of their own unique pronouns as well, which is a nice little inclusion for those of you who really enjoy that aspect to games. And there's not a whole lot of games that do that. Um, and of course, Just, these stories are each interlined with mm -hmm. some LGBTQ plus uh, uh, like things that go on. So you have like my character, for instance, Javi is actually in a gay relationship, which I also don't see a whole lot of that in games as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. And then other characters have their own kind of like yeah. interesting or things they're looking just, forward to when they go home. Or even just a lot of different cultures are kind of combined oh, to yeah. create the world of Splendid Vale. So you'll see a lot of different references to things that could a be from around the world. A lot of names from different places yeah. and locations uh -huh. I hadn't heard of before. I'm like, I wonder if this person is this, you know, I, yeah. I can vision these type of people <laughs> in my mind because it's such a wide variety of different characters cast members. But yeah, overall, if you're interested in a game that promotes diversity and inclusion, a game that is based on like a dungeon crawl slash storytelling experiment or like per perspective with unique dice rolling that involves the kind of action management, then Splendid, uh, Artisans of Splendid Vale is something I strongly suggest you take a look at. Thanks for checking out our review of Artisans of Splendid Vale. If you'd like to check the game out, the link, it is available now. The link will be down in the description and you can go ahead and uh, read more about it, pick it up on the Renegade uh, Games website. And if you're here and you watched the whole video, why not give us a like, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification. We do new board game reviews all of the time. New games, old games, games coming to Kickstarter soon. You get a sneak peek there. And join us Sundays, 6.30 p.m. Pacific time where we play games live on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch, wherever you'd like to watch us do that. Now, thank you so much for watching, and as, <laughs> as always, always, we, we look, look forward, forward to seeing you guys, guys next time. time.